Welcome back. We are here on eToro, and this is going to be my daily uh, technical market analysis for Thursday, January 28, 2021. If you like to support our channel, you're welcome to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner, hit the like button, the bell button to see our newest videos, and you're welcome to join us over at the Patreon, where you can get access to this full video, also our signal service, and also our online trades and courses. So we'll start by looking at the uh, foreign exchange market, cryptocurrency market, and then the commodities and precious metals market. So we'll start by looking at the you know, US dollar, and as you can see, we have rallied quite significantly today. We actually pierced the 50 moving average here, and this had major implications for indices, um, stocks, and um, commodities as a whole, and of course, foreign exchange. As we will see in a moment, most of foreign exchange, the currency pairs that we'll look at were hit significantly um, by this rally in the US dollar index. We were up roughly half a percent. We are We pulled back, a little bit and now we're trading just underneath the 50 moving average and that is well an encouraging sign because we have actually done this several times before we have tried to rally above the 50 moving average pierce the 50 moving average but every single time we have broken down so at this point technical indicators are looking very bullish for the um, us dollar index so we may see something similar to this this may not be the end of this rally especially if the uh, 20 exponential um pierces the or or crosses uh, the 50 moving average and then we'll most likely see something similar to this then uh, the 20 exponential and the 50 will no longer become resistant they will become support and will basically bounce off of those moving averages but we're not there yet first of all we have to have a full uh, candlestick above the 50 moving average in order to come to the conclusion whether or not we are going to trend um, further towards the 200 moving average. At the moment, we're still underneath the 50 and the 50 is still acting as resistant. But this was a major move for the US dollar index and it had major implications for the entire market. So let's look at the Great British Pound, Great British Pound and the US dollar. So as you can see, we fell quite significantly, but technically we're just at the same place. We rallied to these very highs yesterday, and we also started by rallying earlier in the session and then broke down. We went all the way down to 1365, and still we're trading above the 20 exponential. We have not tested it, we have not broken uh, underneath it or anything. So we may have probably one or two more trading days where we... Um, where we depreciate, head towards the 20 exponential, uh, probably pierce the 20 exponential and head towards the 50, but I don't think that we're gonna see a major move very similar to this. So that is not why what I am expecting for this currency pair. 20, 20 exponential is still a major support and the 50 is even, even bigger support in this market. Technical analysis are Terribly flat at this point. They are looking like they're turning around, but they are actually flat at this point. So, um, pull back towards the 20. That is a possible buying opportunity if this turns around. And the target will be these previous highs or in the first run. So, let's look at the US dollar yen. So, as you can see, we have rallied significantly. This was one of those currency pairs that. Uh, basically took off the day. We were up, I think, more than 1%, um, and we have not pulled back. So there's not a lot of pullback here. So this may go significantly higher. We have been in a downtrend for a very, very long time. And if we were to draw this downtrend here, it would look something similar to this. And we would have, sorry, something similar to this. So we have pierced the upper channel. We have broken through it, uh, but we have done that several times in the past. So this is not something new. If we manage to get a, a clear candlestick above this channel tomorrow, uh, then that could mean that we'll head towards the 200 moving average. However, if we break below this channel 
then that could open the door to these very lows again. So this is how this currency pair has been behaving for a very long time. So cross the channel or test the channel and then broken down all the way to the bottom, up again, and so on and so on and so on. So even in the lower parts, we have also pierced the channel significantly and then rallied. So we have to see. I would not be... Uh, I would actually want to see uh, around three or four uh, green candlesticks to the upside before I would come to the conclusion that we were even going to test the 200 moving average. If you consider this move here, then this is around three trading days where we basically rally above this channel and then break down. So at this point, just see what basically happens. If we have a um, a closing underneath this channel or underneath the 50 moving average, then there's a very high probability that we'll continue towards the downside. So if you look at technical indicators, they are all very bullish at this point. So it's going to be interesting what happens. If the US dollar starts to do depreciates, then we could go significantly lower in this market. So let's look at the euro US dollar. So we have broken the 50 moving average and then re rallied again. At this point, it is not very clear where we're going. Um, I could make an estimate that we are going to test these previous highs over here. So that would mean that we'll go down to 11, uh, roughly, uh, roughly 12.00. That would be a very round number and would make quite a lot of sense that we went down there before we continue this rally. If this level breaks, these previous highs here, that could, could open the door to these lower levels here and also the 200 moving average. Technical indicators are looking very, very bearish at this point. So it is possible. For example, the MACD is underneath zero. So we're actually in, in, in uh, negative territory and that is very bearish for, for this um, currency pair. But it kind of depends on the US dollar index. If the US dollar starts depreciating again, then you will see this skyrocket to the highs. So this pullback here also is an indication that there are quite a lot of buyers that are trying to buy it at this level. We're still trading underneath the 50 moving average. So we'll see basically what happens here. So let's look at the Aussie dollar, US dollar. So as you can see, we have broken below the 20 exponential moving average and actually the channel that we were in, we have basically broken through that. So we were in this channel here. We have broken through that channel at this moment. We are actually trending lower towards the 50 moving average. Technical indicators are looking dreadful for this currency pair. So target at this moment are these previous highs. So we are not that far away from those previous highs and the 50 moving average. I would guess that that when we get to the 50 moving average, there's going to be a lot of buyers in jumping in to buy this. It will also be very low in the RSI. This will most likely be overbought at that point. And uh, you will see in the stochastic and uh, the CCI, they will turn around before the MACD uh, when and there's indication that we'll turn around. So my target at the moment is the 50 moving average. And uh, the take profit will be around these previous highs here of 0 0.78 or to 0 0.80. So in long run, it's 0 0.80. And in the medium short run, it'll be 0 0.78. So let's look at the US dollar, Canadian dollar. We can see that we have rallied quite significantly. And this is a currency pair that I think is very interesting to to uh, jump in. We haven't started uh, training this yet, but uh, this is one of those currency pairs I am thinking about basically entering for a short. So we rallied up towards the 50 moving average. And as you can see, it is acting as major resistant. And usually what that means that we will basically roll over here. So there are a few things. If the US dollar, for example, starts depreciating, that will be very bearish for this currency pair. Furthermore, if if commodities, for example, like oil, start uh, start rallying tomorrow, that will also um, make the Canadian dollar um, stronger, and that will of course also 
put pressure on this currency pair to go lower. So look at for the US dollar index and also the value of, of oil. If oil goes up in value, then that will basically means that um, um, that uh, demand for Canadian dollars will increase and that will also make it more uh, more valuable and it will basically pressure this to lower levels. So, but it is holding very nicely. We have actually rallied above the 50 moving average in, in previous, um, for example, here in September, we were above the 50 moving average. Also here in October, in the mid and also in the end, it was the end of October, in the beginning of November, we were also above the 50 moving average. So if we start trending above the 50 moving average, then I'll stay away from this for for some time. But if we get a very green, if we get a red candlestick here tomorrow and closing below the 50 moving average, then it's a trade that I will be considering to buy into. So let's look at oil. <clears throat> So let's look at the Bitcoin. So the cryptocurrency market has uh, fallen all the way down to, or Bitcoin has fallen all the way down to the 50 moving average. We've tested the 50 moving average, pulled a, 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 basically rallied from the 50 moving average again, but we're still down quite a bit today. Technical indicators for the uh, for Bitcoin are still very bearish. If the 50 breaks, then that will basically be a tidal wave all the way down towards uh, these previous lows here and the 200 moving average. So this is a market that went absolutely parabolical. If you look at the Fibonacci retracements for the cryptocurrency, uh, for Bitcoin, I should say, then we, you can see that in the daily chart, we haven't even reached the first Fibonacci retracement. That's how um, how parabolical this, uh, this uh, cryptocurrency is became. We rallied all the way from uh, where it was basically in August, where we were trading at 9,000. And in the basically end of um, of the year, we were trading at 32,000. So yes, it, a very ridiculous move of roughly the 400, over 400% in, uh, in, well, I could say nearly like four months. That is uh, not sustainable. And we can, we can see that uh, pull back at this moment. So the first Fibonacci retracement is underneath the 50 moving average. So it's down at 27. The second one is a 50 here is 22. And I would bet this is most likely where we are heading towards before we continue rallying. So we'll most likely head towards uh, 22,000 and then um, the pull back towards the 50 moving average or the 20 exponential and then maybe rally from there or just completely crash towards the 200 moving average. So the steam is mainly out of the cryptocurrency market. It was a lot of hype like it also was uh, back in 2017 that got the, this cryptocurrency to this level. I'm not saying that we're not going back to uh, 32,000. I just, I just don't see us seeing this type of move anytime soon that is probably not going to occur um, for a very very long time if we go all the way back to 20, uh, 2017 we can see that sorry Yes, here. So if we went all the way back to 2017, we can see that we went from roughly 628 here in, um, this was basically March in 2017, and all the way up to 20,000 in, that was roughly in November. No, this was here, it was December in 2017, before we basically broke down, rallied, and then completely collapsed towards the 200 moving average. This is starting to look very similar to this move. A very uh, aggressive run to the upside, a breakdown towards the 200 moving average, rally again towards 30, and then a completely breakdown towards, in this case, roughly 10,000. That's most likely where we're heading in the long run. So don't hate me for saying this, but 
I don't have much faith in cryptocurrency and so on. Um, but of course, it is possible that we will rally from here. That is possible. Um, we'll have to see. We have to break the 20 exponential. We have to start rallying up towards 40. And if that is the case, then yes, we could actually go higher. But momentum at the moment, if you look at these technical indicators, it is to the downside. It is definitely to the downside. So let's look at Ethereum. So Ethereum has been outperforming Bitcoin uh, recently. There are probably a few reasons for that, but it has been outperforming Bitcoin. So we are still trending above the 20 exponential moving average, and we haven't broken down below it or tested the 50 moving average for a very, very long time. You have to go all the way back to in December um, to see us test the 50 moving average. So technical indicators for Ethereum are also looking very dire. So we are not overbought, but momentum for this cryptocurrency is still to the downside. So we will most likely, well, if, I won't say most likely, but if we break the 20 exponential, then we will most likely test the Fibonacci retracements for this cryptocurrency. So the first one is right here, roughly at 1000. The second one is here at 841. And the uh, 61.8 is at 689. So that will also coincide with a 200 moving average moving this way. And there will be a lot of support right in this area here. That's probably as far as it will, as it will go in basically in the long run. So that is if we break the 20 exponential. But at the moment, 20 exponential is major support. And you should expect this to either go sideways or rally further to the upside. So let's look at Litcoin. So Litcoin tumbled even further than, than Bitcoin today, uh, or has uh, been falling even further than Bitcoin. Uh, we are actually trading underneath the 50 moving average, and that is a really, really worrying sign for this cryptocurrency. At this point, we are most likely going to test the Fibonacci retracements for this cryptocurrency. And as you can see, we have broken through the first one. We have broken through the 50 moving average, and this is the second major support area and that is at 112 dollars we tested it uh, back here and then rallied so it'll be interesting whether or not we run into this resist uh, support area and rally up towards the 50. technical indicators are looking dreadful and if this breaks that opens the door to the 61.8 and that is at 95 so we'll see and if the 90, uh, if this level breaks, then we're heading all the way to the 200 moving average down here at 73. So not looking very good for these cryptocurrencies. Um, they went parabolical. And usually what basically happens is that you will have just as big of a parabolical move to the downside after a move like this. So let's look at uh, NEO. wrong with this yes so neo also felt significantly today and this is starting to look like it's going to test at least this level here where at the 20 dollars and then towards the 200 moving get no 20 sorry 50 moving average at 19 dollars we can also look into fibonacci retracement for this cryptocurrency and as we can see we will most likely have found major support here at the 61.8 that is just above the 50 moving average so this area here should be a major support for this cryptocurrency but still it has to show um, a sign of a turnaround before going higher if these two um, support areas break we'll have the 200 moving average down here at 16 and then 200 moving average breaks will go all the way to 100 uh, percent here at 14. So looking quite dire for the cryptocurrency market, but that is how this market basically behaves. You can see that this move here was also fairly parabolical move and we broke all the way down to the 200 moving average. This was a fair, fairly parabolical move and it would be strange if we fell all the way down to the 200 moving average and then rallied from there. So it is not uncommon for these cryptocurrencies to go 
very parabolic and then break down completely and so on. And that's basically a, a way to basically make money. So let's look at the commodities and fresh metal market. We'll start by looking at oil. So oil has been basically all over the place. So there are many things that play into this, uh, mainly the US dollar index. Uh, US dollar starts uh, appreciating. That is very bad for oil and it will tend to fall. If we basically fell and we pull back mainly to the, uh, to the fact that the US dollar started depreciating at the end of the session. If we look at the technical indicators, they are all looking very dire for, for oil. But the good thing here is that the 20 exponential is holding. So it is very reliable at the moment. And uh, rally from here, that opens the door to 55. But the break of the 20 exponential moving average opens the door to the 50 moving average at 38, at $48. Uh, and that is probably as low as this it will go at this point even the so yes we'll see so let's look at natural gas so natural gas has rallied the last three trading days we're trading uh, trending just above the 50 moving average and this is just more of the same we can just look all the way back here in november broke down rally broke down rally and so on and so on and it's just the same momentum movement uh, 200 moving average is uh, looking like it's very, very supportive. So it will take um, a lot to get through that. But if the 200 moving average breaks, we'll head all the way down to two. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, if we rally from here, we'll probably go and test three. Uh, that is as far as this will go at this current day, uh, uh, current date of the year. So um, it is. It'll be interesting to see, but. Um, I am not looking at this as we're going to break out from and rally all the way to the, to the upside. Uh, we have tried to rally above the 50 several times before and then broken down quite significantly. So we'll see what happens. Technical indicators are looking fairly uh, bullish at this point. And this is probably one of the few commodities, uh, commodities that um, have been rallying today. So let's look at copper. So let's look at gold. So as you can see, we have broken below the 200 moving average. We are actually trading uh, trading underneath the 200 moving average at this point. So that's not a very bullish shine for gold. But still, we are still in the same situation. There has not been a lot of movement in the gold market today compared to other precious metals. Um, when, when considering how uh, much the US dollar did appreciate today, we can see that we are still uh, fairly above, we can go there. We tested the lower part and then pulled back. So at this point, we are most likely going to head back towards these previous highs here of 1800, roughly 1869. There is most likely where we'll go, probably a little bit lower, 1864. And then the question will be whether or not we managed to break out at this point we have tested it several times in the in the past we did try uh, to break out here it did not work and so at some point here we are going to break to the upside or break to the downside i do favor the upside due to the fact to the uh, massive amount of liquidity that is going to be pumped into the um, u.s economy and the world economy in the next uh, few uh, months and years and that will be very bullish for gold so at this point uh, I am still a buyer of gold. Uh, I do favor you know, the upside in gold. So yes, that is most likely where we're going. However, if we break to the downside, we'll most likely go towards 1750 and then to 17. I don't think that is going to happen. So let's look at silver. So as you can see, we broke below the 50 moving average and then rallied above the 50 moving average. And that's a very, very um, bullish sign for this market. Uh, we have a massive resistant area above here. We haven't even gotten close to test it yet. And we also have major support underneath just this area here towards the 200 moving average. So we're trading right in the middle. And at some point, we are going to break above 
the 20 exponential moving average and go and test this area here. Or are we going to break below the 50 moving average and going to test this area and the 200 moving average? I do favor the first scenario that will break the 20 exponential and head towards this area and then head towards 30, uh, $30. Uh, I do not favor the downside. We may see a pullback uh, towards this area here, but I do not think that we're going to cross the 200 moving average or even uh, test the 200 moving average. Technical indicators are, well, they're flat and uh, bearish at this point, uh, but we'll see basically what happened at the moment. Just stay away from this. There is no reason to enter this market for trade. It's just completely pure gambling. So let's look at platinum. So most uh, precious metals and commodities had a really bad time today, and so did uh, platinum. We have fallen from the very high Sierra of 1150 towards the very low Sierra trading at roughly at 1066. Um, we have been here before. Uh, we have not tested, tested uh, a 50 moving average. We'll probably do that at this point. Technical indicators are turning around and heading towards the, and that means that we're heading towards the 50 moving average. I would expect this to be major, major uh, support. Uh, so we'll see. A break of the uh, 50 moving average opens the door to these previous highs here. You see this area, this area. And that is roughly at uh, one, uh, 1,000. So, so that is most likely where we're heading to if the 50 moving average breaks. But at this moment, there's no reason to catch a falling knife. So let's look at pallium. So we have started to, to um, break down from the 50 moving average. We are trending within this this square here and um, that is the very highs of roughly 2.5 and the lowest here at the 200 moving average at roughly 2.189 give or take so at this moment we are trending towards these lows and that is a buying opportunity so how this market has behaved in the recent uh, weeks and months is that every time we get close to the top, we can sell. Every time we get close to the bottom, we can buy. And then it's just been going zigzag. So at the moment, best case scenario, if this falls all the way down to the bottom and hits the 200 moving average, that is a major buying opportunity. So let's look at aluminium. So aluminium fell uh, again today, as most uh, precious metals did. We're trading at uh, 1982, and at this point, we'll probably go even lower from here. Uh, we're trading underneath the 50 and the 20, and if we fall, we'll most likely go and retest 1930. So at this point, uh, we did not go where I hope we will go towards these highs. We instead broke down below the two moving averages and are trading underneath them. Technical indicators have all turned around quite significantly. And at this point, we could actually go even lower towards 1900. So let's look at nickel. So nickel fell all the way down to the 20 exponential moving average and then found major support there. Actually pulled back quite nicely. Um, we could see additional fall here towards the 50. Um, not, probably not test the 50, but fall uh, further from here because these technical indicators are all turning around. So the trend is the same for most of these uh, commodities, pressure metals, that uh, when the US dollar starts appreciating, they will fall in quite drastically. And it will take uh, some change in order for this to uh, go back to uh, the upside. And that's also for most of them. It will take a few days. So probably go a little bit lower tomorrow and then we'll start see a turnaround and that's where you should start entering this market so it is a waiting game uh, but uh, the rewards are quite substantial when the markets uh, behave uh, this volatile and fall this quickly so let's look at sugar so we have fallen all the way below the 20 exponential we actually rallied and then broke significantly to the downside uh, 20 exponential is holding, so it will be really interesting to see whether or not we manage to rally here. This is not a very uh, bullish candlestick, to be very honest. 
Um, technical indicators otherwise are are turning around to the upside. So um, if we get a green candlestick here tomorrow, start trending above the 20 exponential, you could basically put a stop loss underneath here and a target of these very highs. So let's look at cotton. So cotton has continued, um, well, did what I hoped it did, and that is basically break down towards the 20 exponential. Um, technical indicators are all turning around here. They're becoming very, very bearish. Um, I think that this is going to be as far as this market goes. 0 0.8013. Uh, uh, buyers will most likely come in at this area here and then uh, target these previous highs. We Every single time we have gotten close to the 20 exponential in recent uh, weeks and months, we have actually rallied quite substantially. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not that will continue. If we break lower from here, then the 50 moving week average is our next target. So let's look at Cocoa. So Cocoa, well, we're doing just uh, more of the same. We are trading off the, uh, in the very highs here, and we are trading in the very lows here, and we're basically right in the middle. We're also in the middle of these moving averages, and uh, therefore, until we basically break above the 50 the red line or the break below the blue line, there is no reason to enter this market whatsoever. Uh, it is just pure gamble at this point. Best thing it would be if we could manage to break to the very low here in order to buy it or break to the very high here in order to sell it. But at this point, no reason to enter this market. So let's look at wheat. So wheat um, broke down today and the 20 exponential is holding. So yesterday I said that if we had a pullback towards the 20 exponential and it seemed like it was holding, then that would be a very good sign. And actually it is doing right exactly that. Technical indicators are all over the place. So we need a verification of a green candlestick right here in order to confirm that we are going to higher. Break below the 20 exponential opens the door to the 50 or these previous lows here of 624. So let's look at the indices. We'll start by listen, looking at the S&P 500 or SPX, which is called in, um, in uh, Etero. So as you can see, we have had an absolutely horrible day in the, in the indices. They were way, way, way overstretched, and uh, this was just inevitable for, for this to happen. So we can write this a previous um, channel here. We were trading it within this channel after this cons consolidation here. We were trading that, and now we just broke way below this channel, all the way down to the 50 moving average. We haven't tested it yet, but uh, it is most likely where we're heading to. This is probably going to take a few days. I've said um, also on, on Patreon and on our chat there that we are looking at the fall of roughly uh, up towards 4%, probably even more than that. Um, and that is actually a good thing. It's a good thing because we can buy it at a cheaper levels and then target the highs. Um, it will most likely uh, go towards 4,000 in the next few weeks. Uh, but uh, this fall here from roughly 3,850 to uh, where we're trading at the moment, 3,733, um, is quite a big move to the downside. 50 moving average right here. We haven't tested it yet. Technical indicators are looking very bearish. So it's just a waiting game. When you see this moving around, move around in the one hour chart, the four hour chart, it is time to enter this market. I haven't made a trade on this yet, but I will be considering making a trade on this with a stop loss underneath and a target of 4,000. So let's look at the Dow Jones. So Dow Jones, same thing here. We're even more aggressively. We broke the, the 50 moving average. Technical units are looking at dreadful for the Dow Jones. So we'll see how far this will go. I would not be surprised if we went all the way down to 30,000. So that is a major risk support area here. And that means that we will head a little bit lower and then turn around. But 
at this point is still just a waiting game. Wait and see how far this goes. Target after that, if it goes to 30,000, will be 31,500 or 32,000 in the long run. So let's look at the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ also fell all the way down to the 20 exponential moving average. And I think this is probably as far as it will go. It'll probably go a little bit further. Uh, this is a trade that I did make uh, just uh, before I started making these videos. So we have been trading within this uh, channel here. If I can write it a little bit better, something like that. And uh, right here at the 20 exponential moving average. And we are basically right at the channel so we have the channel here and we have the 20 exponential um but i wouldn't be surprised if we saw something similar to this if we broke roughly 200 points uh, points more to the downside or even better all the way down to the 50. um have to change the, the stop loss on my my trade then but but even if we fall down to the 50 then of course it's a major uh, buying opportunity target here is 14 uh, 14 000, so so it will most likely go down or here up towards the channel we haven't broken the channel yet if we stay within the channel that means we'll continue up if we break below it we'll head towards the 50 and then we'll continue up there is uh, no really expectation why this basically should uh, break the 50 at all um, I, this is probably as far as it will go but we'll see um, if it goes lower i'll probably buy even more so let's look at the uh, German DAX. So this is one of two trades I did today. Uh, it was the Dow, it was the Nasdaq, and it was the uh, the German DAX. So the reason why I entered the German DAX is because we found major support here at the 50 moving average. It doesn't mean that the 50 moving average will hold, but this is the, the trade I decided to make. If it uh, if it uh, fails, uh, then I would be very surprised. Uh, last time we went all the way, we broke the 50 moving average, we went to the 200. So it is just as good to basically jump out of the trade if the 50 starts breaking significantly. We'll see in the uh, four hour chart and one hour chart when this starts moving, or moving to the upside. But I do expect this to, uh, to move to the upside within the next two or three uh, or one or two uh, trading days. But um, pullbacks in the major indices they are were quite substantial today and the reason also for that is because they were way 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 overstretched we have been rallying since uh, basically since november from in the dax from 11300 all the way up to roughly 14000 and now we're having a pullback towards the 50 so considering this move and this move then this is just a minor move to uh, compared to this massive move to the upside so it would, uh, sh it were it was to happen eventually, and it today it did happen. Um, technical indicators are looking very bearish, but um, most likely it will turn around in the next one or two days. So, hope you found this helpful. Uh, you're welcome to write to me on either Patreon if you have any questions. Otherwise, good luck and thank you very much.